Hi, my name is Kevin Merrill and I'm new to the WOW Tribe. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about shed hunting and how to train your dog how to shed hunt. Um, it's an upcoming sport and it's growing really fast. The, they actually have a national championship for shed dogs now. And for those of you that don't know anything about shed hunting, it's uh, basically you can go out in the off season, February and March, and look for fresh dropped antlers off of uh, the white tail bucks. It's great for your family and friends to go along with you and, and incorporate them into your lives since sometimes we put them on hold throughout the season. For years I used to beat the brush with binoculars trying to find these sheds with my family and friends and our success rate was rather low. Uh, we spent hours upon hours and covering miles upon miles trying to find these sheds and you, you basically have to walk up on them uh, to find them. The tips and tricks definitely do increase your percentages but they're still low. Um, now that I'm more established and, and have a family, I can't get out as much, so I, I ended up purchasing a German short hair. Here in Pennsylvania, bucks will generally drop their antlers anywhere from January to early March. That's a good time to get out and really look for these sheds. Um, some, some tips to where to look is any, any bedding area, um, food sources, all the trails leading from the bedding area to the food sources. Uh, Another good spot would be south-facing slopes. The sun beats on the south-facing slope throughout the winter most of the time, so the bucks really like to bet on those areas. Um, any, any type of pine tree or um, any place there's thermal cover or wind breaks, that's where the deer tend to concentrate in the wintertime, and that's where they'll drop their sheds. Generally speaking, when, when bucks get up from their bedding area, they, they shake just like any animal would. Their, their antlers will fall off there or they'll fall off on the trail to the feeding area. Uh, most deer don't travel too far if it is a hardy winter because they want to stay close to the food source. This is Harper, my GSP. She's uh, roughly a year and a half right now and this will be her second season of shed hunting. Um, to introduce you to how I got started is her first toy was a shed and, and that's the only thing I allowed her to play with. Um, that way she got used to liking sheds. So what I started what I started to do is just toss sheds for Harper and make her fetch them. Um, something simple. Uh, so once she started to fetch the sheds and bring them back to me, I started to introduce her to just spacing them out. So even in the house or out in the yard, I'd plant a few sheds throughout the yard and, and let her retrieve them and bring them back to me. Um, I took this, the process very slow because she was young and uh, after that, I, I just started to move out into the, the outdoors more. There's lots of companies out there that have great information to help you train your shed dogs. I didn't follow them strictly, but I did use a lot of their information. Uh, there is a product called Rack Wax that I did use, and it's a, it's a scent product that you can put on the horns, place the sheds out, and helps your dog find the, the sheds. Um, so if they're used sheds or dummy sheds, it, it'll make them more lifelike. All right, now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about planting sheds for the dog and setting up a little exercise for them. I do use a little bit of rack wax on the sheds. Uh, that way it gives them a little bit of scent so she can smell them. Um, the, the one thing that I didn't do today is uh, scent free the, the sheds. I do spray them down and wash them just to get rid of the scent so she doesn't have any of my scent on them. Another thing, when I go to plant the sheds, I'll throw them as far as I can away from my my trail so she just doesn't follow me to the shed. All right, we got all the sheds planted out and we're gonna take Harper out and uh, see see how she does, so. All right, girl, find a bone. Find a bone, yes, find a bone. Find a bone. Find a bone. Find a bone. Bring it here. Come, come. Bring it here, girl. Atta girl, good girl. Good girl. Find a bone. Did you notice when I was 
when I was spacing out the sheds, I tried to space them out as far as I could, uh, 50 to 60 yards apart. You want to make it as lifelike as possible. If you put them too close together, you know, the dog will get used to that, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, but I try to space them out as far as I possibly can. Find one. Find a bear. Find a bear. One thing I did want to mention is when you're out when you're out in the field with your dog looking for sheds, you always want to carry one in your backpack to keep them interested because you know when you're out looking for sheds, it's it's not like when you when you're exercising, uh, they're very hard to find. So if you have one in your backpack, you can always throw it out and keep their interest. Another thing I forgot to mention is a command for your dog. So with Harper, mine is find a bone. It can be find a shed or whatever you like. Uh, just make sure you, you stay consistent with it. When you're out with your dog, you always want to make sh make sure they're hydrated, even if there's snow on the ground and it's cold. You, you know, they're they're your primary concern. So make sure you you keep a close eye on them and, and don't work them too hard. Right in the pile. I don't know why she didn't want to. How you do, huh? Hi, right, girl. Bring it here. Come on. Harper. You're losing interest. Whether it's a small shed or a really nice large shed, what it's all about is being outside with your dog and your family and enjoying the outdoors. So get out there and give it a try.